Hey guys, special build show edition today. We're going to be talking about tankless water heaters that are mounted outside. We're on the side of a house here. And what we need to do to make these frost protected so they don't freeze. And if for some reason there was some frozen pipes, let's say you woke up in the morning, turned on the hot and nothing came out. I'm going to show you how to thaw this as well. All right guys, so here's what's going on. I am in Texas. It's pretty usual to see these mounted outside. And this is the kind of weather we usually get when it's cold in Austin where, you know, the low is dipping close to 32. That's no big deal for a tankless. But what we've got coming up in the next couple days is looking a low on Sunday of 14, a low on Monday of 10, but the high that day is still below freezing at 25 degrees. That's what's got me uh, calling all my past clients or I've installed an outside tankless unit. 99% of the time, and honestly with most winners, no big deal. This one's gone for 15 years and only had one freeze issue. But let me show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna put some heat tape on the pipes that are leading up to this unit, and that's gonna protect them from freezing. And then the other thing you're gonna wanna know about these tankless units is they are internally protected from freezing, meaning the unit right here itself, the heat exchanger has heat tape from the factory. So as long as the power is on at your house, you actually have a pretty good measure of freeze protection built into the unit itself. But what is not froze pr freeze protection, what's not frost protected, <laughs> whatever I'm trying to say, is down here, these pipes. So what's happening here is these pipes right here, this PEX line from the house that's going through the brick, this is a remodel situation. That line there is supplying the cold water to the unit and the hot water out of the unit right here is going back into the house. I actually put heat tape on this uh, some time ago, but it's looking like it's gotten some uh, rat damage or something. This is looking bad. I don't believe this is gonna work. So we're, gonna, we're actually gonna cut this off and we're gonna pretend like this got nothing uh, or this had nothing. I'll put a link in the description for this type of product. You can get this locally just about anywhere. I bought the six foot version knowing that I've only got, you know, maybe two feet of pipe on each direction that needs protected. But if you had a bigger amount of pipes visible, you'd wanna get the longer uh, protection. So we're gonna wrap our pipes with this and then you're gonna see me uh, put some pipe insulation on top of that as to the best of my abilities. And then we're basically just gonna plug this heat tape in and anytime it gets cold, it will run uh, the heat on here and keep this thing protected. So here's the basic process. All right, we got it cleaned up. All the duct tape's gone, all the heat tape's gone. This part is a little bit uh, tricky. There's not a whole lot to uh, tell you other than you just need to get it as close to the pipe as you possibly can. Uh, this black part that you see here is where the heat's actually gonna come out. And so we wanna try and wrap this in parallel with the pipes as much as possible. Uh, it's a little bit of a uh, pain, frankly, especially as tight as it is in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it as tight as possible. I'm just gonna use some duct tape. Uh, T-Rex I always have available. Uh, so we're gonna wrap it with a little bit of T-Rex in just a couple of spots, about every three or four inches. So when we do that, I'll get back to you. Okay, heat tape is wrapped. I actually wish I would have gone a little longer. I may come back and redo this uh, once I order it, uh, the next size up, which is probably a 12 foot tape. I ran a little short. I would have liked to have insulated these pipes uh, or put heat tape on those. I ran a little short, so I'll probably order another one. But for today's purposes, this will at least get me through the weekend. The next step is I'm gonna try and do my best to do as much pipe insulation around these sections as possible. So, uh, and that's next. All right, we did our best. Not the prettiest job in the world. I don't, I don't love how neat that is because it's not very neat. But I'm gonna put that cover back on. We're gonna stick this out 
and then you'll notice when this has power this cord will run yellow and I would just run it through the winter months leave power to it in the winter months it's only those cold snaps that for 48 or 72 hours it's below 32 that we're worried about this and with this heat tape and that insulation actually we should be good if temperatures drop below uh, 10 degrees for multiple days we could still have a problem and if you didn't do this how would you uh, recover the next day uh, here's what you need to do we would take this cover off let's say we wake up in the morning I turn my hot on and nothing happens we're gonna take this cover off and have the pipes as exposed as possible and all you're gonna do is with a hair dryer not a heat gun but a hair dryer we're gonna slowly move that hair dryer on all these pipes on the inside I'm gonna leave my hot on in one of my faucets and as I slowly put my hair dryer in these pipes the water is going to start flowing again you'll hear this unit kick on it'll kick on and this will be making hot water and you'll know it because it'll make noise and then I'll know okay I thought it the other thing you might consider doing is if you've got that extreme cold happening uh, put a little bit of a stream uh, a heavy drip on the hot side so that you can get that water moving through there Guys, take care of your tankless units in this bad weather. Uh, this reminds me that uh, I haven't put a tankless on like this on the outside in uh, at least a decade, because uh, these events do happen every five or so years. Uh, if you do these steps, though, you'll be taken care of. I'll put a link to all the materials I use in the description. If you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, although we'll see you next time. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time on The Build Show.